This is BS. This is BS. Why are we here? This was put on the TV since scheduled by Dicer, and I was told I had to send it. No clue why you're here, and you not being here would have made my job a lot easier. I could have just played Animal Crossing all day. I'm so mad. This is Michael Scott. He could have at least pretended to push some buttons on the phone. Who's buying this? There's no way anyone is buying this, right? And if there's no chance that anyone would buy this, then there's no chance that any of this is funny. Why is this scene? Everybody, I just got off the horn with corporate. And uh, basically, I told them where they could stick their little overtime assignment. Go enjoy your Friday. But the clock showed it was only 4.25. Were they supposed to be off by 4 or something? Because Dolly Parton always told me it was 9 to 5. Which honestly, also doesn't make sense, because that would imply you have no lunch break. So it really should be 8 or 8.30 to 5, and I have to send the show for making me dive into that mentally stressful wormhole. Why do these two people have levitating heads? Merlot. How many candles do you need in one room? Are they attempting a seance? Is their home a shrine? Do they know about electricity? Is she starting a candle-making business? Smell. Oh, well. Too many candles is still a sin. Should we do the tour first? We have appetizers? First. Tour. Wrong. Food always wins. Plus, shouldn't the tour wait until Andy and Angela have arrived as well? So sorry about this god-awful carpet. We are still a work in progress here. Carpet shaman. Oh, she meant the floor. I cannot create in the same space that I conduct business. Me either. Which is why I just choose to eat peanut butter crackers and watch TJ Hooker reruns in my office. I do all the sinning from the bathtub. <laughs> I am bonfire. James Bonfire. This is 100% in character, but terrible Sean Connery slash James Bond impressions are always a sin. Guess what? White and eggshell white are exactly the same uh. color. Michael Scott would be great at TV since. I finally broke down and bought myself a plasma TV. <laughs> Oh, come on, when did Michael Scott take the Homer Simpson journey to a negative IQ? I mean, there's being socially unaware, and then there's being dumb as a pallet of paper. It's hard to buy into a character that becomes the latter. Oh, and I also built this table. And now we have Michael bragging about building a piece of sh table that no one would ever brag about. If anything, Michael would do a terrible Tim Allen impression here and joke about how he's seriously incompetent when it comes to home improvement. You know, Pam, in Spain, they often don't even start eating until midnight. I mean, usually more like 10 p.m., but that's because most Spaniards work until 8, and the sun doesn't often set until 10. This is because Spain changed to the wrong time zone in 1940 as a sign of solidarity with Nazi Germany. So basically, the sin is Nazis, or time zone, or both. Also, one serious disservice this show did was to the character of Jan. She was a strong, brash female in power who didn't put up with Michael and then they turned her into his jobless girlfriend, who all of a sudden acted as strangely and inappropriately as he does. Boo on you, the office. Boo on you. You know what? Hunter was a terrible assistant. Cool, that stereo has an automatic conversational volume adjuster. That's a thing, right? I don't care what they say about me, I just want to eat. Just so we're on the same page, the camera person followed Pam into the bathroom for this interview, right? Michael and Jan seem to be playing their own separate game, and it's called Let's See How Uncomfortable We Can Make Our Guests. And the show is playing a game called Let's See How Uncomfortable We Can Make Our Audience. Is that much better? Apparently my apartment flooded. Something with the oh, sprinkler. Oh no! Pam? We should probably get going and see the damage. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you don't need two of you to do that. That's true. Oh, f off, show. This is absolutely where Jim would disagree and emphasize that two heads are better than one, and they would both just leave offering their apologies. But even one camera sitcom's got a sitcom, I guess. Does anybody read the paper? No, literally no one reads the paper. And I moved in and I cleaned it, so I guess that makes me the double. <laughs> You are! She is! She is the devil! I'm in hell! Well, at least we all know now what it would look like if Paul Feig directed Marriage Story. You know what? Girls Trip. Angela, come on. Girls Trip. I'd give every sin back if this ends up with Jan peeing while suspended on a zipline or Pam making friends with a grapefruit. We came here to eat dinner and to party. This is a dinner party, right? Roll commercials. You said that I could not invite Dwight because he was not part of a couple. And because we didn't have enough wine glasses. Why is Michael acting like he wants Dwight here now? God, this show is infuriatingly and falsely creating these scenes of tension too fast for me to keep up. At the beginning, Michael did mention the wine glass issue to Dwight, but he also seemed to be inviting Angela and Andy at the last minute. And I guess Jan being the reason he didn't invite Dwight could be considered a twist, but it's not a good one. And Michael has tried to get out of doing things with Dwight constantly throughout this series. He even tries to get out of going to his house at the end of this episode. The thought of popping one of your beets into my mouth makes me want to vomit. You know what they say about Dwight's beets? One pop and you just can't stop. And I think we're talking about ball. Now. I can't prove it, but I think she might be trying to poison me. If Michael honestly believed that, why would he have these two couples over for a dinner party? I get he doesn't have much common sense, but he's got enough to not have the possibility of four possible murders on his conscience. Would you write down your email? Because I have just so many questions. 
email? Haha, because old people don't understand technology. You're too good for this type of uncreative lowbrow humor in the office. You usually reward us with much more creative lowbrow humor. You're telling me that large painting was hanging up there, balanced with one nail? Because I did not believe you. Good luck paying me back on your zero dollars a year salary plus benefits, babe! Is this supposed to be funny? Seriously, I'm genuinely asking, because they can't be trying to pull an actual human emotion out of this cringe fest, right? I'm gonna get going. Fine, get out of here. Is Shroot Amish for hole of the ass? Because the more I watch this show, the more I realize Dwight is a straight up dick. And straight up dicks often deserve sinning. I stole this. <laughs> for you, ma'am. And of course the episode tries to turn us around with a little bit of the awesomeness that is Jim and Pam. I honestly like them, I do, but this entire episode seems to be all about how depressingly awful most couples are, and the Jim and Pam cherry isn't going to save the relationship turd Sunday in the slightest. When I was his age, I had four or five girlfriends at one time. He was he was f***ing his cousin. I wasn't f***ing my cousin. Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. So it will be me and Jan and him and Jim. And Angela and Andy. hoo -ah! We got you this. I am not drinking any f***ing Merlot. This is my workspace. This is it. Check that out. You smell it? It's quite pungent. I love it. I love lamp. Dad, can you oh. just simmer down? Simmer down now! No rhyming! I mean it! Anybody want to feel it? Oh, I'm in hell! Oh, ah! I'm burning! You are in hell, Lichaman, and I am the devil.